Hi, Diane Bolden, executive coach and author of The Pinocchio Principle, Becoming a Real Leader. Today I want to tell you something you probably already know, and I have a little confession to make. New Year's resolutions, 80% failure rate. Did you know that? According to the US News and World Report and many other research studies, chances are, and the research indicates, most of us will have given up by mid-February. Not everybody sets New Year's resolutions. Only about 40% of adults in the United States do. But most of us feel compelled to begin thinking about what it is that we want to create or experience, achieve or become in the new year. There's something magical about that clean, fresh slate that makes us want to begin again to create something new. And I was no exception. There's a lot of things that I really want to experience in the coming year. New programs I want to create, new products, new services. And I got it in my head that I really needed some structure. I wanted to be more productive during my days. I wanted to make the most of my time. And so my head ran away with a plan. I came up with an elaborate one, one that involved getting up at the crack of dawn, having an entire workout done, having certain days structured for certain activities, eating earlier, going to bed earlier, repeat, repeat, repeat. Well, my confession, that didn't even last more than two weeks. And of course, I beat myself up for not following through. Can you relate? Is there something you really wanted to do? Maybe you were really excited about it, but it just didn't pan out the way that you envisioned. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're not a failure. You're just human and life happens. There's all kinds of unanticipated twists and turns and curves and obstacles that come into play. Because by definition, when you create a plan, you're doing something at a point in the past in order to help you address something in the future. And there's always a little bit of a disconnect. So I had to figure out a way to get back on the horse. The goals and the dreams, the visions, the projects, the services, all the things that I want to create, they're too important for me to abandon just because my silly little plan didn't work. And yours probably are too. So it begs the importance of knowing a distinction between the power of the head and the power of the heart. The head creates plans. The head executes step by step. The head is logical. The head is concerned with the how. And sometimes the how isn't readily available. But we do the best we can to try to create a plan that will get us to where it is that we want to go. The heart, on the other hand, is a storehouse of power. The heart has everything that you need in order to execute your plan. The heart is what gets you up off the ground after you've fallen down, brushes you off, and puts you back in the game. Sometimes we get so fixated on our plans, we forget about the why of what it is that we really want to accomplish. Why it's so important. Why it matters. Why it's meaningful. And if you lose your why, you've lost your fuel. And if you're relying solely on the plans that your head created without your fuel, you may find yourself spinning in circles or getting derailed. The other thing to remember is that if the thing you aspire to do or to create, to become or to achieve, requires that you go out of your comfort zone, that you do something that you're not very good at, or maybe you have never even tried, you're gonna need more than a plan. You're gonna need courage. And courage comes from the heart. Did you know that the Latin root of the word courage is core, which actually means heart? Now, it's been said that courage is not the absence of fear. It's a decision that something else is more important. So when you've lost your way, when you've slipped off your game, when the plan that you identified isn't quite panning out, go back to your why. Go back to what it is that really matters. When you find your why, the how will follow. And if your why is strong enough, it'll pick you back up again after you fall so you can begin again. If you'd like more on how to accomplish your most precious dreams, visions, and goals, I encourage you to download my special report, Why Real Leaders Don't Set Goals and What They Do Instead. So here's to the blank slate that you still have in front of you. Pick yourself up and begin again. Thank you.